Did you know that there's a country where you might get buried alive in sandstorms and that it has the most overweight people in Asia? This is the dark side of Mongolia. The landlocked country of Mongolia is located between Russia and China and consists of beautiful scenery such as upland steppes, deserts, and forested mountain ranges. It was speculated that the Huns may have been their ancestors. A united Mongolian was formed in the early 13th century by none other than Genghis Khan. Their influences was immense, and Mongolian territory included China, Russia, Central Asia, and the Middle East. Unfortunately, the Mongol Empire collapsed and split up. The country was colonized by the Qing Dynasty from China in 1691. In 1911, the territory gained autonomy under China as the Qing Dynasty dissolved. Mongolian troops continuously drove out Chinese forces with Soviet assistance until 1921. The country proclaimed itself as the Mongolian People's Republic in 1924 and named Ulaanbaatar as its capital. Because of their close relations, Mongolia remained a one-party state closely tied to the Soviet Union's until the 1980s. The country received plenty of economic, technical, and military assistance from the Soviet Union until 1990. Mongolians decided to end the monopoly of political power by the communists for free multi-party elections. They also decided to adopt a market economy instead of their communist-backed command economy. How has this decision affected Mongolia's economic state? Initially, the country struggled as it didn't receive any assistance from the Soviet Union anymore, but it's now recovering. Their GDP increased by 4.8% to US $16.81 billion in 2022, and so was their GDP per capita, which increased by 3.3% to US $4,242 in 2022. Mongolia has the highest prevalence of obesity and overweight people in Asia at 49.4%. This has serious consequences for their citizens, such as heart disease, hypertension, stroke, diabetes, and cancer. Some of the reasons behind this is that their diet consists of calorie-dense foods such as animal meats, milk, and dairy to keep up with the cold weather and nomadic lifestyle. The country also doesn't have much of a stigma toward weight compared to other East Asian countries. Take China, for example. That's the polar opposite of Mongolia when it comes to body image. Chinese are so obsessed with body image and weight, they have a trend called the A4 fad, where they must fit an A4 paper around their waist. This resulted in an army of women who put beauty ahead of anything else. When you picture Mongolia, you might think of mountains and clean air. So it might come as a shock to you that their capital, Untanabar, is one of the most polluted cities in the world. This is because of the reliance on coal as a source of heat and energy. On cold days, you can barely see buildings and people. One time, the air monitor even hit 133 times the WHO suggested maximum limit of dangerous airborne particles. Aside from the coal, the city's topography is also to blame. It's located in the narrow valley of the Bogud Mountain on the Tul River, creating a thermal inversion above the city and trapping its toxic air. To solve these problems, the government resorted to implementing a ban on raw coal use and provided a form of pressed coal called briskets that burn longer and has low fumes. They managed to lower the airborne particle concentration by 50% in 2029 but as COVID-19 happened and poverty rose, people started to use all form of cheap fuels to generate heat and the air quality worsened. Air pollution isn't the only difficulty Mongolia is facing. The country has also some of the worst sandstorms in the world due to the Gobi Desert. Mongolia has always had a harsh continental climate with strong winds, snow, and dust storms. Lately, Climate change desertification has increased the frequency of storms in Mongolia even more. One particular instance is the sandstorm in 2021, dubbed as the worst one in a decade. 
A Mongolian herder had to huddle with the sheep as airborne dirt blocked the sun in his vision. He was buried underneath the sand until his brother dug him out the next day. Thankfully, he survived, but 10 other herders died on the steppes. The sandstorms also killed an estimated 1.6 million livestock, creating a void in herders' income. Expanding desertification and dry climates due to overgrazing by animals and mining are to blame, according to scientists. If this continues, the nomads and herders might have to move elsewhere to avoid being a victim of violent sandstorms. Mongolia isn't the only country affected by this. Neighboring China is also experiencing these sandstorms. That's why the countries are working together to stabilize the dunes and increase vegetation. In the end, this will lead to a safer living space where Mongolian nomads can still strive. If the Mongolian government can't keep desertification under control, they might face another problem an increasing number of unregulated tent cities or Gur districts on the outskirts of its capital city. Gur itself is a yurt or traditional Mongolian circular camp made of wooden frame and felt cover. Almost a third of Mongolia's population lives in these areas, where they don't have access to sanitation, waste management, electricity, and proper water supplies. Some of these people were forced to live in Gur districts because they could no longer live the nomad life or their livestock were decimated due to climate change. The city is planning to create green, affordable housing for the residents. It will have 20 eco-districts with 500 homes in each. The housing will have insulated walls, parks, solar panels, and sanitation facilities. Until now, the project is still ongoing and not realized yet. So whether or not this will become a reality remains a mystery. What's one of the most common remedies for people who live in cold weather? Alcohol, of course. Mongolia is no exception to the rule, and it has one of the world's highest alcoholism rates. Approximately 30% of women and 50% of men in Mongolia are heavy drinkers. Alcoholism has long been regarded as a way of life by Mongols, and people are expected to drink excessive amounts of alcohol. For men, this signifies masculinity, patriotism, and virility. The tradition goes back to Genghis Khan's time or Imperial Mongols. Many efforts have been deployed to counteract alcoholism, such as banning alcohol sales on certain days and the establishment of Alcoholics Anonymous in 2013. There's no denying that Mongolia is synonymous with Genghis Khan, the ancient leader who brought the golden age of the country's empire. Temujin, Genghis Khan's original name, was raised in a humble family. Thanks to his intelligence and tenacity, he managed to create the largest land-based empire in history. But you can't ignore that the figure was also known for his brutal force and conquests. Throughout his years as a leader, the Khan was responsible for the death of roughly 40 million people. It was said that his principle was that every man who surrendered would be spared, while those who refused him would be annihilated. Provinces turned to piles of rubble due to his policy. His influence and legacy are still felt today. According to researchers, Genghis Khan killed so many people that he somewhat saved the planet by eliminating 700 million tons of carbon. Another research stated that he was so productive that 8% of men in the former Mongol Empire possessed the DNA from Genghis Khan's lineage. Some people consider Genghis Khan as a conqueror, while some see him as a hero. That's why it's even more fascinating that no one knows where his popular figure was laid to rest. His tomb is still a mystery up until now, simply because Genghis Khan didn't want to be found. Legend has it his soldiers carried his lifeless body and killed any living thing they came across just so no one would know where he was buried. Some sources even said that the soldiers who escorted him committed suicide after burying their leader to keep the information a secret. There is plenty of interest from the international parties to find his final resting place, but most Mongolians want to respect Genghis Khan's wishes and decided it's best to keep the tomb a mystery. An ancient tradition that might be tracked back to Genghis Khan's time is creating issues in modern days. Mongolian horse races. 
Horses are a symbol of the national spirit because the Khan was said to have founded the empire on horseback. Kids who are as young as five years old are forced to risk their lives and limbs to uphold this celebration. They're preferred because they're light and don't weigh down horses as much as children. The ancient sport is so dangerous that the International Labor Organization deemed it as a form of child labor. One example of an accident is when a young boy fell and was trampled by the horses, crushing his skull. Thousands have been injured and tens have died due to these horse races. Most of the time the injuries are caused by a lack of safety equipment. Some people have tried to stop the tradition altogether, but the government came to a compromise by creating new regulations. To protect the child athletes, trainers will be responsible for the jockey's life and the minimum age has been raised to eight years old. Mongolia has a captivating and unique landscape, but it has its challenges. Hopefully, the country can overtake its dark side so that we can preserve its rich heritage and natural beauty for years to come.